little majority, but uh, ably prosecuted by the Committee on Communication, Information, and Innovation. And uh, we are in agreement that uh, we are able to move this at this time. And that's what I will do, Honorable Speaker. Proceed, proceed, I'll proceed and move this. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the Technopolis Bill of 2024 be read a second time. And I want to take this time to commend the Committee on Communication, Information, and Innovation who have applied themselves fully in the processing of this bill. They have even taken time to not only prosecute what was presented by the ministry, but to put in their bills. Not only did they put in their bills, this committee has even taken its time to travel all the way to Konza to see one existing technopolis that is in the, in the making, that is the Konza Technopolis Bill, from where this idea stemmed from. Honorable Speaker, as you are aware, Vision 2030 was very intent on transitioning Kenya into a knowledge-based economy. And to achieve this goal, it is crucial to establish a seamless flow of information and knowledge between academia and the enterprise sector and the corporate sector. And this government recognizes the need to take leadership in creating an environment that fosters this knowledge. Honorable Speaker, the Konza Technopolis is a Kenya Vision 2030 flagship project under the economic pillar where the goal is to improve the lives of all Kenyans by achieving an average of 10% GDP growth rate per annum and sustaining the same until the year 2030. The project aims to develop Konza Technopolis as a globally competitive smart city by creating an enabling environment through utilization of information, communication, and technology for social economic development. Honorable Speaker, this House would recall that there was a legal notice number 23, 5th of April 2012, that established the Konza Technopolis Development Authority, also known as COTDA, and it was tasked to coordinate the planning, the development, uh, and the development of the Konza Technopolis in a 5,000-acre land at Konza. And Konza sits right between three counties, the county of Kajiado, the county of Machakos, and the, uh, and the county of Makweni, and it is on this 5,000 acre land at Konza that Konza Technopolis sits, and it is intended to integrate infrastructural facilities. It is also administering and managing the Technopolis operations, regulating and approving of investment activities and land leasing in the area. <clears throat> now, Honorable Speaker, the Konza Technopolis development authority in its form as it was presented comes into headwinds when we realize that Kotda had a life of 10 years, Mr. Speaker. However, when they are leasing land, the land leases go up to 90 years, Mr. Speaker. And this sets a problem for Kotda in the form and manner as it exists. Honorable Speaker, as you are aware, the government, through its uh, bottom-up economic transformation agenda, recognizes the crucial role that the digital economy plays in accelerating the country's economic uh, transformation agenda. And so this bill intends and proposes for the establishment of Technopolis to energize a robust ICT-driven economy towards meeting the 21st century's needs and the Technopolis Development Authority to drive this country towards achieving its economic development objectives as outlined in Kenya Vision 2030. Over and above the Kenya Vision 2030 and the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, Mr. Speaker, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has also formulated the Kenya Digital Superhighway Program, a project that is ongoing. And Mr. Speaker, the, this bill shall come in in a great way to support the implementation of this digital superhighway. Honorable Speaker, this bill that I present before this House 
seeks to provide a comprehensive framework for the establishment of a technopolis in Kenya and to create technopolis development authority which will be responsible for the development, the governance, the planning, the management, the improvement and the maintenance of every technopolis established. As we speak today, there is only one technopolis and that is Konza Technopolis, which is under the Konza Technopolis Development Agency. But with this bill, Mr. Speaker, nothing stops us from having a technopolis in Wajir, in Mandera, in Kisi, in Taraka, in Dagureti, if land allows, Mr. Speaker. And so this is a bill that seeks to expand a good idea into an even better idea. Honorable Speaker, the bill that I moved this afternoon has 65 clauses and it seeks to transition the former Konza Technopolis Development Authority to the new Technopolis Development Authority. And you can see that it is tactful, Mr. Speaker, that we are removing the word Konza so that we allow for the establishment of other Technopolis beyond the one that exists in Konza. And it shall also be seeking to revoke the state corporations, uh, uh, corporations and this is the Konza Technopolis Development Authority Order of 2012. Mr. Speaker, part one, and this is in clause three of this bill, outlines the objectives of the legislation as to provide for the establishment, the development and the management of a technopolis in a designated geographical area to create conducive environment to attract and retain world-class talent by providing state-of-the-art infrastructure, position a technopolis as a premier destination for technology-driven businesses, research institutions, innovation ecosystems, provide for adoption of sustainable environmental practices and technologies within a technopolis, offer incentives and other forms of government support to encourage investments in a technopolis and support the development of Kenya's knowledge-based economy. Mr. Speaker, I have moved in this house a motion uh, seeking to institute a science museum in the Republic. And such an idea finds its place in such um, a bill, Mr. Speaker, in such a place when we establish this technopolis, they can also house uh, some of these developments up to and including a science museum. Honorable Speaker, part two, and these are clauses four to 15 of the bill, establish technopolis development authority whose primary function is to develop and manage technopolis in Kenya. And this part also provides for the board of the authority, the qualifications of appointment for the chief executive officer and his functions and for the office of the corporation secretary of the authority. Honorable Speaker, part three of this bill provides for the establishment of a technopolis by the cabinet secretary through a notice in the Gazette, and for the development of a high technology innovation system at a technopolis by the authority, and clause 17 seeks to provide features of a technopolis which are globally acceptable norms and standard of a technopolis which distinguish technopolis smart city from other areas and cities. Mr. Speaker, it is in this part of the bill that we are able to define distinctly what a technopolis is and what differentiates a technopolis from the five cities that we have in the country. Mr. Speaker, a technopolis is worlds apart from what we have established, from what has developed from municipalities, localities, and so on. A technopolis is designed specifically to undertake the, the responsibilities and roles as prescribed in this bill. Mr. Speaker, clause 18 of this bill provides for a buffer zone of a technopolis and it outlines the development control measure to prevent urban sprawl and to ensure seamless integration to a technopolis. The clause allows expansion of a technopolis to accommodate auxiliary services, 
not provided for within a technopolis. Mr. Speaker, this is critical. We are seeing the problems that we are running into with cities like Nairobi, where a city that was placed in a most unlikely place finds itself in problems when it has to expand. Nairobi City found itself in a swamp, Mr. Speaker, developed at a time of La Nina. And when the, La the El Ninos came, very early on as the city was being established, the people who established Nairobi City realized that they were in problems. And the problems that were observed right at the onset when Nairobi City was being instituted exist to date, Mr. Speaker, that we have a city that sits in an undrainable swamp, a city that today, if El Nino happens, we all know what happens. We are not even able to drain this city. But even more importantly, the question still begs whether if you wanted to expand Nairobi in a way where you are providing for public transport, for example, underground, whether the water table in Nairobi would allow for that. And this is the point that is informing Clause 18 when we talk about having a buffer zone around the technopolis, which will allow for proper expansion, but also prevent unwanted sprawl or urban sprawl when other areas around the technopolis are developing. Mr. Speaker, the Clause 19 of this bill allows the authority to develop a high-technology ecosystem to create synergies for co-creation, collaboration, and innovation within a technopolis and achieve the objectives of a technopolis. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Communication, Information, and Innovation has in its own motion visited Konza Technopolis. And I can report to this house that beyond just the horizontal infrastructure that is now almost complete, vertical infrastructure is happening <coughs> at the city, Mr. Speaker. The development is at a very advanced stage. But even more importantly, the technology that is being used at Konza Technopolis to manage traffic, to bring in water, to manage that water in the, in the offices and the homes within Konza, but even more importantly, to put out gray water and dirty water out of homes, is all smart systems, Mr. Speaker. And so, Clause 19 allows for this authority to be able to develop high technological, high, te high technology ecosystems that are not only physical, but are also driven by the people who shall be resident in this city so that they are able to co-create, to be able to collaborate, and able to innovate within this technopolis. Mr. Speaker, Clause 20 provides for a one-stop shop to facilities that is uh, uh, the doing of business in a technopolis by ensuring administration of government services and regulatory essentials under one roof. Clause 21 of this bill, Mr. Speaker, allows the authority to establish Technopolis Small Enterprise Support Center, which shall be supporting the incubation and growth of small enterprises, utilizing high-tech and emerging technologies drawn from the innovation ecosystem. And Mr. Speaker, it might be worth noting that this is not Kenya dreaming or Kenya building castles in the air. These things do exist elsewhere, Mr. Speaker. If you take the example of Silicon Valley out there in the US, you can see what it is that Kenya is visioning to do. But even me, more importantly, Mr. Speaker, as earlier reported, what we are talking about is already in the offing in Konza. And I would advise any member of this house to visit Konza and see what is happening in that very beautiful technological corner of this country. Mr. Speaker, part four, and these are clauses 22 to 27 of the bill, contain provisions for development control in a technopolis and for the application, approval, and revocation of a development permit. Mr. Speaker, it is in this part that the bill gives the authority power to approve development plans submitted by investors to the authority in compliance with the master plan to ensure a technopolis is planned, zoned, and developed as per globally accepted standards. Mr. Speaker, this part also seeks to provide for a review and appeal mechanism 
for grievances resulting from division from the decisions made by the authority in regard to development permits. Mr. Speaker, Clause 27 of this bill creates an offense for non-compliance and specifies sanctions and legal consequences which are imposed on a person for non-compliance with development permits requirements in a technopolis. Mr. Speaker, this becomes very important. And I'm glad that uh, I see engineers in the house this evening, Mr. Speaker. And engineers will tell you that if you do not provide for management of growth of cities, you might end up running into the problems that we are having in a city like Nairobi, Mr. Speaker, where you are not sure what plans can be approved and what plans cannot be approved. So you shall find an, an ECD school next to a maternity wing, next to a, a, a cemetery, sitting next to a, to a hospital, and so on and so forth, Mr. Speaker. So part four of this bill provides for orderly management in the development of a technopolis. Mr. Speaker, part five of the bill contains the licensing provisions the bill outlines under Clause 28 the requirements for a person intending to apply for a license to operate or carry out business activities in a technopolis and gives the authority power to grant exemption. Under Clause 29 of this bill, the authority is allowed to issue different classes of licenses to ensure alignment to different strategic uh, focus areas and master plan of a technopolis. This bill also gives the authority the discretion to issue licenses and provide for renewal of a license before the expiry of the validity period under Clause 30, and the bill provides for the suspension or revocation of licenses where a person has, among other things, contravened any of the conditions of the license. Honorable Speaker, um, Part 6 of the bill contains the enforcement provisions, including sanctions for non-compliance with the Act and Clause 37 of this bill gives the authority the power to undertake inspections in a technopolis to ensure compliance with the development control and licensing requirements. And the bill also outlines the enforcement sanctions for breach of any provision of the bill and requires the authority to comply with the provisions of the Fair Administration Acts 2015 under Clause 39 and 38 which I know would be of import to you, Mr. Speaker, as a lawyer knowing the need for fair administra uh, administrative actions. Honorable Speaker, Part 8 of the bill contains the financial provisions, including the sources of the monies for the authority, the annual estimates, and financial reporting mechanisms. Honorable Speaker, Part 9 of this bill contains provisions relating to the Technopolis dispute resolution tribunal, a tribunal that shall be established to determine appeals from decisions of the authority on licensing, development, control, and any enforcement decision. This part allows appeals to be made, to be made from decisions of the tribunal to the high court within 30 days. And clause 51 mandates the Judicial Service Commission to appoint staff at the tribunal as appropriate and Clause 52 also allows the expenses of the tribunal to be paid out of the judiciary fund. Mr. Speaker, Clause 57 of this bill obligates the tribunal to formulate its procedure for the determination of appeals placed before it for determination. And Clause 58 outlines the powers of the tribunal that are necessary for it to adjudicate matters. In terms of decision making, the bill allows the tribunal under Clause 59 to confirm or set aside the order or decision of the authority in question or make such other order as it may seem uh, or, or deem just. Clause 60, Mr. Speaker, provides for the right of appeal of a decision of the tribunal to the High Court within 30 days of the decision, and Clause 61 empowers the Chief Justice to formulate practice rules and procedures for the tribunal. Honorable Speaker, the final two clauses, uh, Clause 10, uh, and this is uh, uh, Part 10, sorry, and these are Clauses 62 to 65 of the bill, contain the general provisions. And these include provisions relating to the power of the Cabinet Secretary to make regulations, 
to the power um, to, uh, to make provisions relating to the power of the cabinet secretary to make regulations operationalize the provision of the act, incentives applicable to a technopolis, and all that uh, is carried with the provisions that are relating to the powers of the cabinet secretary. Mr. Speaker, in clause, 65, in, in clause 64, where a convicted person is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 2 million shillings or to imprisonment, imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or both. Under clause 65, the bill provides for general penalties for offenses of non-compliance and for carrying out business activity within a technopolis without a license or exemption where on conviction the person is liable to a fine not exceeding 5 million shillings or to imprisonment to a term not exceeding five years or both. Honorable Speaker, Part 11 contains the transitional and saving provisions. Mr. Speaker, I think it will be important to realize that there existed an authority by the name of the Konza Techno, uh, Technopolis, uh, Technopolis Development Authority. And we need to provide for the transition to the new Technopolis Development Authority so that we are able to safeguard the gains made by Kotda and also to ensure the expertise and regulatory aspects made are seamlessly transitioned. Through the transition clauses, Mr. Speaker, the bill preserves the existing rights and obligations, including the contracts, the staff, ex chief executive officer, the board of directors, and ensures that a member of staff and the board of the former authority in office continues to members of staff and the board of the new authority. Clause 67 revokes the state corporation, and that is the Konza Technopolis Development Authority Order of 2012. Mr. Speaker, these clauses are important to give confidence and to give assurance, not only to the public, but also to the people who are already uh, serving under Kotda, so that they know that with the establishment of the Technopolis bill, we are not rendering them obsolete, neither are we rendering them uh, jobless, but even more importantly, that the operations that have been under, uh, uh, going on at the Konza do not uh, stall or run into transitional issues. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I would therefore wish to urge the honorable members to support this bill so that we can have a comprehensive legal framework for the establishment of a technopolis in Kenya so that we are able to accelerate the knowledge economy and innovation, advance science, technology, and innovation through technological hubs, thus positioning Kenya as a global technological hub. This